their commitment to our transatlantic security alliance and agreed on the importance of NATO expanding its counterterrorism role. And here in Sicily, the G7 has come together to address the biggest issues we face, from terrorism and conflict to important foreign policy issues, global trade and climate change. I will address each in turn. Today, against the backdrop of Monday's cowardly attack in Manchester, we have discussed what more we can do together to defeat global terror. We agreed the threat from Daesh is evolving rather than disappearing. As they lose ground in Iraq and Syria, foreign fighters are returning and the group's hateful ideology is spreading online. Make no mistake, the fight is moving from the battlefield to the internet. In the UK, we are already working with social media companies to halt the spread of extremist material and hateful propaganda that is warping young minds. But I am clear that corporations can do more. Indeed, they have a social responsibility to now step up their efforts to remove harmful content from their networks. Today, I called on leaders to do more. We agreed a range of steps the G7 could take to strengthen its work with tech companies on this vital agenda and ministers will meet soon to take this forward. We want companies to develop tools to identify and remove harmful materials automatically. And in particular, I want to see them report this vile content to the authorities and block the users who spread it. And the G7 will put its weight behind the creation of an international industry-led forum where new technologies and tools can be developed and shared to help us deny terrorists their pernicious voice online. It is also vital we do more to cooperate with our partners in the region to step up returns and prosecutions of foreign fighters. This means improving intelligence sharing, evidence gathering, and bolstering countries' police and legal processes. The investigation into what happened in Manchester is ongoing, but the suicide bombers' links to Libya undoubtedly shine a spotlight on this largely ungoverned space on the edge of Europe. So we must redouble our support for a UN-led effort that brings all the parties to the negotiating table and reduces the threat of terror from that region. Similarly, in the case of Syria, we agreed that it will be impossible to defeat terrorism without a political settlement that brings a stable transition away from President Assad. We welcomed the progress towards de-escalation, but are clear that the regime's backers, Russia and Iran, must use their influence to deliver a ceasefire and move to a genuine political process. Leaders agreed today that we must challenge Iran's destabilizing activity in Syria and the wider region, and that we must continue our efforts to prevent Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapons capability. Leaders were united in their condemnation of North Korea's continued nuclear weapons and ballistic missile tests. We agreed to increase pressure on Pyongyang as we work to secure a peaceful resolution in the region. This afternoon, I led a discussion on trade and the global economy. As we prepare to leave the European Union, I reiterated the UK's abiding commitment to free trade and open markets. But I and my fellow world leaders also recognised that some people feel left behind by globalisation and that not all countries are playing by the rules. We need to show our citizens that the global economy can truly work for everyone. This means recognising the importance of the international rules-based system and the World Trade Organisation in creating a level playing field for trade but accepting that we need to make the system work better. And it means taking action to ensure that all our citizens can share the benefits of globalisation and support those who feel they have lost out. The UK's industrial strategy of economic and social reform is helping spread growth and opportunity to all parts of our country and society. We are ensuring people have the skills to capitalise on the opportunities presented by new technologies and a digital economy at the start of and throughout their careers. And as we work to make the UK an even more attractive place for businesses to invest and grow, we want companies to act responsibly and play their part in making ours a country that works for everyone. We had a productive discussion today about the importance of global action against climate change.
to safeguard the prosperity and security of future generations. The UK remains committed to this agenda. We will keep energy affordable and maintain a secure and reliable supply in order to protect the interests of businesses and consumers. Clearly, the global challenges we face today are more urgent than ever before. When it comes to the fight against terrorism, we can only defeat this evil together with determined and coordinated action. As the G7, we stand united today in our commitment to uphold the values we share and to create a safe, secure and prosperous future for all our citizens. Thank you. Now, take some questions. Uh, John. <clears throat> Prime Minister, leaders have agreed to do more and to do more together to fight terrorism. Can you say that you have done enough to provide funds, powers and police numbers when you consider the Manchester bomber was known to the authorities? And if I may, what do you say to those who argue that British military operations abroad have increased the risk of terrorism at home? Well, first of all, let's be very clear on police funding that we have protected counter-terrorism police funding. We've increased the funding for our security and intelligence agencies, uh, and we continue to provide them with the support they need. And uh, you talk about powers. Actually, as Home Secretary, of course, I oversaw the Investigatory Powers Act going through Parliament, which ensures that our agencies have the powers that they need. Now, you've asked me a question about uh, the uh, issue of British foreign policy, and I'm aware this is an issue that has been raised today, and I want to be very clear about what has been said today. What's happened today is I have been here at the G7 working with other international leaders to fight terrorism. At the same time, Jeremy Corbyn has said that terror attacks in Britain are our own fault, and he's chosen to do that just a few days after one of the worst terrorist atrocities we have experienced in the United Kingdom. And I want to make one thing very clear to Jeremy Corbyn and to you, and it is that there can never ever be an excuse for terrorism. There can be no excuse for what happened in Manchester. And I think Mi pare that che la bellezza di Taormina abbia esercitato anche un ruolo positivo. Questa discussione si traduce in punti di convergenza sulle maggiori questioni che abbiamo affrontato oggi. Jason Gross from the Daily Mail. Um, Prime Minister, you mentioned the election. You started this campaign a few weeks ago, 20 points ahead in the polls. Uh, you're now apparently five points ahead in the polls. Well, what's gone wrong? with your campaign and, and what are you going to do with it? Thank you to all, everybody sitting around this table for the support that you have shown to the United Kingdom in the face of this absolutely horrific attack that took place. And I think it is important that as leaders we have shown our fierce determination to ensure that we use uh, every uh, tool available to us to fight against terrorism and protect our people. Uh, but I will be out for the rest of the campaign across the country and pointing out several things to people. First of all, uh, that there is this clear choice between myself and uh, me and my team, the strong and stable leadership and the strong and stable government that we uh, will share uh, and will provide for the country in the national interest to get you the possible deal out of Brexit, or Jeremy Corbyn and a coalition of chaos propped up by the Lib Dems and the SNP. And this issue of the Brexit negotiations matters because the European Union wants them to start just 11 days after the election. So we have to have a government that knows what its approach is going to be and that has the strong hand to take into that negotiation, negotiating process to get the best possible deal. And you refer to the polls and of course uh, if you look at the figures uh, that were in the House of Commons before it was dissolved, just six, the loss of just six seats would mean uh, that my government would lose its majority. So when people go to the polls, they have a very stark choice. Uh, strong and stable leadership under me and my team, getting the best deal for Britain from Brexit, or a coalition of chaos under Jeremy Corbyn, failing to protect our national security. Uh, George? George Parker from the Financial Times. You had a meeting this morning with President uh, Macron. 
I just wonder whether he was someone you felt you could do business with on the question of Brexit. And specifically, you were talking to him about the possibility of running simultaneous discussions on the divorce proceedings Me pare and the future trade arrangement. Did he give any ground on that issue? Well, the, I had a very good and productive discussion, constructive discussion, with uh, President Macron. The relationship that the United Kingdom has with France is an important one for us. We have very uh, clear cooperation on a whole range of areas, including on our security and uh, on defence matters. And uh, as regards Brexit, I'm very clear and I remain clear that we have, under the treaty, up to two years to negotiate withdrawal and the future relationship. And when we leave the European Union, it's important that we know not just the withdrawal terms, but also what that future relationship will be, which of course will cover trade. We want a comprehensive free trade agreement, but also cover cooperation in other areas as well. Beth. Thank you. Uh, Beth Rigby, Sky News. Prime Minister, uh, your Defence Secretary said last year that 400 uh, foreign fighter extremists had returned to the UK since 2014. You've been Home Secretary, you were Home Secretary for six of the past seven years. You could have potentially tac tackled this years ago. Were you thwarted by David Cameron? Più forti, la lotta passa per il web. Su questi due punti insiste la dichiarazione yes, comune sul terrorismo, that, uh, nella quale i sette grandi chiedono con forza ai fornitori di internet, ai social media, di aumentare i loro sforzi in, contro uh, i contenuti pubblicati online, da gruppi o individui estremisti. Of, uh, Così Paolo Gentiloni esprime soddisfazione. Mi pare che la bellezza di Taormina abbia esercitato anche un ruolo positivo excluded more hate Gentiloni, breaches from the United Kingdom than any Home Secretary has ever done before. We did not hesitate to act in protecting our national security. Va oltre, così fa il punto uh, Tom. Di lavoro, odierne. Questa discussione si traduce in punti di convergenza sulle maggiori questioni che abbiamo affrontato oggi. Sull'immigrazione si discute ancora e si continuerà domani mattina, ma sembrano esserci pochi passi in avanti sul commercio internazionale e il tema più spinoso, il clima, resta sospeso perché, spiega Gentiloni, l'amministrazione Trump sta riflettendo su questo tema e non vuole prendere posizione sugli accordi di Parigi, sui quali invece gli altri paesi ribadiscono il loro impegno. Con Massimo Vasciaveo da Taormina. What has happened today is that we have seen uh, the leaders of seven countries, the G7 countries, come together to recognize the importance of dealing with this issue of terrorist propaganda and terrorist hatred and terrorist activity online. That is a significant step forward. We've also, as I say, have put our full weight behind the creation of this industry-wide Thank you to all everybody sitting around Theresa May ringrazia per la solidarietà non formale ricevuta dai leader dei paesi più industrializzati del pianeta. L'impegno per sconfiggere il terrorismo si allarga dal campo di battaglia anche al web, dice, per individuare e seguire le tracce dei jihadisti. La tragedia di Manchester, l'attentato più grave che abbia colpito la Gran Bretagna dagli attacchi del 2000, ha costretto la MEI a rivedere la sua strategia in questo G7. La minaccia del terrorismo ha prevalso sulle preoccupazioni per la tormentata trattativa sulla Brexit che Londra sta per aprire con l'Unione Europea. Ai risultati colti finora a Taormina fanno da contrappunto le distanze tutt'altro che colmate su clima e commercio internazionale con gli Stati Uniti che hanno smentito nella forma ma non nella sostanza l'attacco di Trump alla Germania rea di invadere il mercato americano con le sue auto. Una stoccata sulla quale la Merkel ha driblato con eleganza la cancelliera tedesca, il capo della Casa Bianca. Hanno avuto un colloquio definito vivace e franco. Quanto al nodo ancora da sciogliere del clima, Trump fa sapere il suo staff. Vuole una giusta decisione. Da Taormina a Carmela Giglio, GR1. Are aware of this uh, material that they report it to the authorities so that appropriate action can be taken. Francis. Uh, Prime Minister, you, you raised the issue of Libya. Uh, what link is there between Libya and the current domestic terrorist threat situation in the UK? And with the benefit of hindsight, was our intervention there a success? The uh, question of what's happened in relation to the investigation, obviously certain information has been made public about the uh, links that the individual who perpetrated this attack had with, uh, had with Libya. Obviously this is an ongoing investigation. What we discussed today, though, was the wider issue of how we ensure that we have within Libya 
uh, the stability that we all want to see. Libya is a country that is important not just in relation to these matters, but also, as you'll be aware, in relation to migration of people through trying to reach, uh, trying to reach Europe. And we're very clear uh, that a UN-led process, we want to uh, increase our efforts to ensure that the UN-led process uh, can be a successful one. Thank you, uh, Prime Minister Jack Blanchard from the Daily Mirror. Um, if I can just take you back to police funding, as you, you say, you, you've protected counter-terrorism funding and, and you've increased money for security services, but you have also overseen the removal of around 20,000 police officer jobs, and the Police Federation have said themselves that the reason we now have army on the streets of Britain for the first time in such a long time is because they no longer have the resources to do the job. Now, don't you bear some responsibility for that? No, the the uh, plan to ensure that there was military support available to the police was one that was uh, is a well prepared plan. It was developed a while ago. It was done so that at uh, a time when we go <laughs> to critical <laughs> in our threat level, which of course is determined <laughs> independently by the Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre, uh, that okay. extra support could be made available, and that is exactly what has happened. Uh, can I just ask, do I have Emmanuel? Emanuele Riccardi? Yes. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prime Minister. So, what, um, is it true that about the climate there is still no agreement with President Trump and at the end the solution could be six against one? Thank you. Yeah. We had a very good discussion about the importance of this issue of climate change and about how we address this issue of climate change. I think I mean, the United States is uh, considering its uh, uh, pronto, position pronto, in relation pronto, to these pronto, matters okay. and what its uh, bene, policy is going to be. Così, but there was no doubt around the così, table altrimenti... about how important this particular issue on climate change is. And we were all very clear you know, uh, about that and about the role the Paris Agreement plays in that. We'll take a couple more. Yes. Prime Minister, you talk about the difference between yourself and Jeremy Corbyn, so I want to just ask you a domestic issue. Pronto, pronto, Earlier pronto, 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 this week, pronto. the Daily Telegraph said your social care funds were in chaos and many pensioners have been left in confusion. Prime Minister, will you reassure those pensioners by telling them before the election what level you will set the social care cap at and also who it is who will be losing their winter pool allowance? Well, let's be very clear about what we have done in our manifesto uh, in relation to social care matters. We, have, we face as a country a very significant challenge in the fact that we do have an ageing society. The figure, which I suspect, Anushka, you may have heard me use before, is that in just a decade we will have two million more people aged over 75. Now, unless we address the long-term sustainability of our social care system, the system will collapse. So I want to ensure that people have the confidence of knowing that they will have the care that they need and the dignity in their old age. And that's why we have put together, uh, the, so brought this social care package uh, forward. And it is a social care package, which means that nobody will have to sell their house in their lifetime. Uh, they will be able to ensure that they don't see their savings pronto, 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 being virtually pronto, pronto, wiped out uh, and they will have money to pass on pronto, pronto, to pronto, their pronto. children right. and there will be a cap set on the okay. overall amount of money that, is, uh, that they spend on social pronto, care. Pronto, pronto, pronto. What's important about this is that it is a plan which ensures long-term sustainability in the system because without that, the system will simply collapse. So I'll take a couple more questions. Yes. Prime Minister, uh, Tim Ross from Bloomberg. In any relationship, particularly a special one, if one partner messes up, it's usually a good idea to apologise. Did Donald Trump say sorry to you for the leaks on intelligence when you met yesterday or today? And would you continue to describe the transatlantic relationship as a special one? The relationship between the United Kingdom and the United States of America has been a special relationship now for many years and does continue to be one. They are uh, our most significant defense and security partner. Uh, yes, I did raise the issue of leaks of uh, information that have been shared by the police with uh, the FBI with President Trump. He has uh, made clear that that was unacceptable. Uh, the Metropolitan Police have, I as I understand it, received assurances from the FBI and are now uh, have re restarted the process of sharing information with them. 
I'll take one last question. Yes, uh, Prime Minister, just to go back to the election. Uh, when you called the election, uh, it was a case of trying to increase your majority so that you could get the Brexit talks through. Um, is th given the latest polls are now down to 5% in your favour, has this now just turned into a fight just to stay in power and keep your job? No, I'm very clear why I called the election. I was concerned that when we went through the process, we triggered Article 50, but it was clear to me that there were other parties in Parliament who wanted to frustrate the Brexit negotiations, who did not want to uh, enable us to have the best possible deal for Britain, that we are the only party that is respecting the will of the British people and is committed to delivering on the vote that they took in the referendum for us to leave the European Union. When it comes to the choice on the 8th of June, there's a clear choice for people to take in the knowledge that 11 days after that election, those Brexit negotiations will start. The choice is there's only going to be one of two people sitting around that Brexit negotiating table for the United Kingdom. It's either going to be me or Jeremy Corbyn. And that is the choice that people will be facing. Me and my team, with that strong and stable leadership, going into those negotiations with a clear plan for the Brexit negotiations and a clear plan for a stronger Britain beyond Brexit or a coalition of chaos, Jeremy Corbyn being propped up by the Liberal Democrats and the SNP. Thank you. Alessandro. Eh, ti sento basso, mi mandi una sigla, qualcosa? È bassa, è bassa la sigla, ragazzi. Sì. No, 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 lo so, lo so, lo so, lo so. Adesso lo, lo, lo setto io la cosa. Sì, sì, sì. Un altro po'? Ok, basta. Pronto, 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 così va bene.